Messiah. And we are born again Christians, we have experienced God in our lives, we have a testimony, we have a changed life. Jesus rescued us from sin. Jesus is saving us day by day. He is transforming us, conforming us to the image of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit of God lives in us. It dwells in us and leads us to holiness and righteousness. And uh, that's what it means to be a child of God. That's what it means to be born again. So we must reach this point in our life where God intervenes. And we turn to Him, we confess our sins to Him, He forgives us, He gives us the Holy Spirit. And we are born again, we become a new creation and we follow Him into the kingdom of heaven. That's the way that leads to life, through Jesus. Any other way, it's going to lead to the lake of fire, it's going to lead to death. Because God has appointed a day when He will judge the world in righteousness. And Jesus is the judge. He is the one that will come back in the clouds with angels. Every eye will see. We will all see the glory and majesty of God in the clouds. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the question is, is Jesus your Lord before that day? Before you die, the Bible says it's appointed for man to die once, after this comes the judgment. So Jesus has to be your Lord, has to be number one in your life, before you die, before you meet Him. That's what it's all about, because then you can be forgiven, you can be made right with God, you can have a new life, you can enter into the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus wants to take you to the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Will you follow him in? Or will you reject such a great salvation? The Bible says there is only one name given in heaven and earth by which we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. There is no other name given. You cannot enter in through any other way, through any other person. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. So which way are you going? Who do you trust to save you? Which way are you following? Who is your savior? There's only one, Jesus Christ. So follow him and live. Repent and believe the gospel. Good news. Good news that Jesus Christ died in our place. He took the punishment that we deserve. Because of his sacrifice, we can be forgiven. Christ crucified is the good news of the gospel. Repent and believe. We come to proclaim, we come to preach, we come to to warn the people that they have transgressed against God. They are sinners and the wrath of God abides upon sin. And one day we are going to meet Him, we're going to give an account. Are you under the wrath of God or are you a born again child of God? found mercy, who has received the Holy Spirit, who has been forgiven of the sins. As the Bible says, repent and be converted so that your sins can be blotted out. And times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. Do you enjoy time in the presence of the Lord? There is joy in the presence of the Lord. Have you had your sins blotted out, forgiven? Have you received the joy? peace, the love that comes with, with that transformation. Well, if not, then keep seeking, keep reading the Bible, keep searching for God. Ask Him, and it shall be given to you. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Seek, and you shall find. Seek the Lord while He may be found. We have time. Time, this life is a, is a vapor that appears that for a little while. The time is short. No man knows what tomorrow is going to bring. Tomorrow might be your last day here on this planet. Then the body perishes. The spirit goes back to God who gave it. We give an account to, of, of our life. What have you done with your life? Have you turned to God? Have you, have you been seeking Him? Have you read the Bible? Have you obeyed His commandments? What are you going to tell Him? It's a fearful thing to fall into.
put in the hands of the living God. We've got to serve him, worship him, spirit and in truth. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. But fools despise knowledge and instruction. We must fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man, according to King Solomon, who was the wisest man that ever lived, according to the Bible. So King Solomon concluded he, he was a rich man, he was he had a, a lot of wisdom. And um, the conclusion of the matter was to fear God and keep his commandments. So do you fear God? Do you fear God? That's the question of the day. Because the fear of God leads to reverence, leads to obedience. It leads to the truth. Because God is to be feared and revered. But then comes in His love, His perfect love that casts out all fear. So we begin by fearing God because of who He is. And, uh, and that's when our eyes are open. When the, uh, Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. So when we are blind to the truth, we walk around without any fear of God. And um, when our eyes are open, and we begin to fear God. We begin to wonder about our our helplessness before Him. He is a consuming fire. How can anyone stand in front of a holy God? We need a mediator. Jesus is the mediator. The only mediator between God and man is Jesus. We need to go through Him. Because no one has seen God. Because he's holy, he's set apart from sin, from evil. So true understanding is to depart from evil. Have you departed from evil? Or are you running towards evil? That's the question. Because God, he hates evil. And there is a place for that. It's the lake of fire. It's a real place. Don't go there. Don't end up there. Repent. Turn to Jesus and live. Confess your sins. Say, God, I have sinned against you. I've lied. I've stolen things. I'm, I'm a fornicator. I'm a drunkard. I'm not proud of it. I repent. Change me. Save me. Forgive me. And God is willing to forgive. That's the good news. He is graceful and full of mercy. He wants to forgive us. It's an undeserved, unmerited favor, the grace of God. The grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. It has appeared to all men, the grace of God. So it's not just the live as you like, you know, it's, it's about denying yourself, picking up your cross and following Jesus. So are you doing that with your life? That's the question following Jesus. Is he, is he number one in your life? Do you have a relationship with him at all? Do you know him? Is he living inside of you? You have the Holy Spirit, you've repented, you've read the Bible, you believe it, you follow it, you obey it, and God is a reality in your life. That's what happens when you become a born again Christian. Your old life passes away and you become a servant of the Most High. And you serve Him, you follow Him, you live for Him. It's, uh, it's all about Jesus. So, has this happened to you? We are here because this has happened to us. We are witnesses, not Jehovah Witnesses, not like false religions. They don't save you. We are witnesses because we have experienced God in our life. We have a, a an experience with God. He has changed us from the inside. He has set us free from bondages of sin. I don't need I don't drink anymore. I don't need to drink. God has given power to overcome sin. And this is a real event that happens in your life here and now. And you can experience that for yourself. When you repent, turn, you believe and you call upon his name. With your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with our mouth we confess unto salvation. So we're going to believe in our heart, 
with it and hope that through our mouth. So what is in your heart? What, what does your heart think about God? The Bible says that the heart of man is, is wicked and evil. And it's deceitful. So we cannot trust our heart. We have to follow the word of God. The Bible. We have to follow God. Because if we follow our deceitful heart, we will be led astray. We must believe in God's word. And stand upon his word. Because God doesn't mind. He doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today and forever. And his word is going to come to pass. So repent, believe the gospel. Jesus says, Christ crucified is the good news of the gospel. And our part is to turn, to receive the gift, and to seek the Lord while he may be found. Confess our sins to him. Turn away from sin and turn to him. Jesus saves. He's changed us. He's changed our life. And he can do the same for you if you seek him. If you open your heart, if you confess, read the Bible, obey it, believe it. 